You're such a slob. There's no way you're my kid. Get lost, you pig. Yelled Bob, and I stepped in to protect Luke. If you won't acknowledge Luke as your own son, I'll take him in. Days later, when the two found out that Luke had been on TV, they came to our house. Luke, come home with us. They implored. To them, Luke retorted, Who are you guys? I'm Katherine Johnson. Ever since I lost my husband a few years ago, I've been living alone. Living alone in a big house was lonesome. Having no particular hobbies, every day was unbearably dull. However, there was one thing I looked forward to. That was seeing my grandson, Luke. Seeing my adorable grandson, Luke, was the only thing that brought me comfort. My son, Bob, and his wife, Michelle, ran a nightclub together. It seemed to be flourishing, and the couple always seemed busy. The two had a baby after several years of marriage. Apparently, they wanted to have a girl and make her the star attraction of their club. Even before the baby's gender was known, they bought tons of baby girl products, holding high hopes for a girl. However, the baby turned out to be a boy. The disappointment of the two upon knowing that it was a boy was profound. Once the baby is born, you'd think they find it endearing regardless. That's what I optimistically thought, but it didn't go that way. Bob and Michelle showed no interest in the baby they had brought into the world, nor did they seem to care much for him. Even his name wasn't given much thought by the two. Fed up, I presented a few options, and from those, the couple chose the name Luke. The couple continued to show little interest in Luke. The two were determined to have a girl next time, but they never had another child. Michelle gradually began to harbor resentment towards Luke. All our plans got messed up because you are not a girl. It's all your fault. Michelle seemed to have such misplaced hatred towards him. Moreover, led by Michelle, Bob too began to adopt a cold attitude toward Luke. If only I had intervened at that point, maybe things wouldn't have turned out this way. Eventually, Michelle stopped making meals for Luke. She'd leave a $5 bill on the table every day before heading to work, not returning until the early hours of the morning. Luke spent the long hours from evening to night alone. Just imagine how daunting it must have been for a young child to wait alone for his parents' return. With the money Michelle left, Luke had been buying his meals at the convenience store. Still a young boy, Luke didn't consider things like nutritional balance and would often buy sweets and potato chips to eat. Furthermore, there were times when he would eat convenience store meals that were about to be discarded. A child going to the convenience store alone daily is inevitably noticeable. A sympathetic convenience store worker would secretly share some food with Luke. Thanks to this, even on days when Michelle didn't leave money, Luke was never without a meal. By the time Luke was in third grade, his weight had exceeded 150 pounds. This was the result of his unhealthy diet of sweet bread, convenience store meals, and sweets every day. Bob and Michelle seemed displeased with this. Ever since Luke had put on weight, the two had been verbally abusive towards him. Look at how fat you've gotten. Get a grip. You're not my child, you're just a fat burden. Get out. You're in the way. When I learned that they had said such things, it felt like my heart would burst. I wonder how Luke felt hearing such words from his father. Worried about Luke, I occasionally visited his house to check on him. From Bob and Michelle's tone, I had a hunch they were starting to resent Luke. I visited their home to confirm that they weren't doing anything terrible to Luke. One day, sadly, my fears came true. There's no way a fat so like you could be my child. Get lost, you pig. As soon as I opened the door, I heard Bob shouting. I rushed towards the noise and saw Luke lying on the floor. Judging from his hand on his cheek, Bob must have hit him. Bob, what are you doing? I rushed over to Luke, pulling him towards me to shield him from Bob. Looking at Luke, he gazed back at me with a vacant expression. His look resembled that of surrender, and I regretted making such a young boy wear such a face. Bob seemed unaware of my arrival, his eyes wide as if they were about to pop out. 
Do you understand what you're saying? Luke is genuinely your child. I yelled at Bob. Although Bob is my son I gave birth to, I couldn't comprehend what he is thinking at all. Even if Luke was not the daughter he had hoped for, I could not believe the treatment he was giving to his own innocent son. If you don't acknowledge Luke as your child, I'll take him in. Both Luke and Bob were taken aback by my sudden words. From there, the conversation moved rapidly. Bob and Michelle, seizing the opportunity to rid themselves of their problem, accepted my proposal eagerly. Thanks, Mom. Now I can concentrate on my business, right, Michelle? Yes, thank you so much. On the day I took Luke in, the two of them said this with the brightest smiles I had ever seen. That smile made me sad. I fully understood how little they cared about Luke. I had been observing, thinking that it would be best for Luke that he was with his real parents, but I strongly regretted not taking him in earlier. An hour away back to my house, Luke said, I'm sorry, I'll grow up fast and move out. What on earth was he saying? When I asked him, Luke replied with a stoic expression. You regret taking me in on a whim, don't you? You look angry all along. I look angry? Luke nodded sadly. No, I regret not doing this sooner. I should have let go of my notion sooner that you must be happier to be with your real parents. Aren't you annoyed with me? Luke looked at me with anxious eyes. I tightly hugged Luke. No way! I know for sure that I love you more than those two. Luke seemed uncertain of how to react. He was freezing like a statue for a while, and then he mumbled softly, This is the first time I've been hugged. Tears welled up in my eyes, and I swore to myself that I'd make this kid happy no matter what. From that day on, Luke transformed into a lively and cheerful kid. He started laughing more than I could have ever imagined, and he also became more talkative. Every day when he returned home from school, he would help prepare dinner while excitedly sharing the day's events. You seem very cheerful today, Luke. Did something good happen? Do you know? Something funny happened today. While we were singing in music class, a sparrow flew into the room. The teacher was in such a frenzy. I was wondering why, and then she almost started crying, saying, I can't handle birds. Remembering the events, Luke chuckled. He looked so cute and lovable that my heart melted. Since he started eating healthy meals at my place, Luke's physique became more standard. Although he maintained his childlike charm, his contour sharpened, making him look quite handsome. He shyly told me that the girls at school started talking to him more. Luke seemed happy every day, and I was relieved to see him that way. The day of the first parent-teacher conference since I took Luke in came. Luke's homeroom teacher made a suggestion. Why don't you have him take an IQ test at the hospital? This suggestion made me anxious. I felt like they were saying there was something wrong with Luke's intelligence. Is Luke falling behind the others? As I asked this, the teacher hurriedly waved his hands. No, it's the opposite. From my experience, I believe Luke may be gifted. I was a bit puzzled by the unfamiliar term gifted. According to the teacher, gifted refers to children who possess innately higher abilities compared to their peers. The teacher handed me a piece of paper. This is a graph showing the change in Luke's grades. At a certain point, Luke's grades have shot up significantly. Sure enough, the graph showed a sudden upward trend. Looking at the dates written on the x-axis, I realized that the change happened right after I took Luke in. I was surprised at how sudden it was, so I asked Luke, Have you started going to cram a school or something? This increase is unusual though, but that wasn't it. Apparently, Luke had been adjusting his results to avoid doing too well. I didn't quite understand what the teacher meant, so I turned to look at Luke, who was sitting next to me. Noticing my gaze, Luke began to speak. At my old home, if they found out I was doing well in school, they didn't like it. They'd say I was being cheeky, and I'd get hit more than usual. Luke shrugged his shoulders. So, during tests, I would intentionally leave answers blank or get them wrong. 
I actually knew all the answers, though. Luke smiled smugly. Now there's no need for that, so I just take the test normally. It's so easy, it's boring. Even just reading the textbooks lets me understand everything in class, which isn't fun. I want to study something more challenging. Luke sighed deeply. I was momentarily worried that the teacher might feel offended by his words, but my worries were eased when I heard the teacher laughing loudly. What do you think? If Luke is gifted, we might be able to provide support that suits him. Why not get tested at the hospital? If it's for Luke's benefit. With that in mind, I decided to take Luke to the hospital over the weekend. From what I can tell, based on his behavior at school and home, as well as the results of his IQ test, it seems that Luke may be gifted. The doctor spoke clearly. Luke's IQ was significantly higher than average, which surprised me. I had no idea Luke was this smart. No wonder he finds school so easy. To fulfill Luke's desire for more challenging studies, I decided to hire a private tutor for him. The tutor is a veteran who graduated from a prestigious American university, and he understands Luke's characteristics. Luke was pleased, saying it was more fun than school. He passed both the English and Chinese proficiency tests with the highest grade at the tutor's suggestion. When the tutor posted about his proud student on social media, it spread rapidly. Luke became the talk of the town, and we started getting interviews from newspapers and television stations. One day, while spending the usual time with Luke, the doorbell rang. Oh, are the reporters here already? There was still about 30 minutes left until the interview time. I opened the door, expecting the reporters, and was surprised. Long time no see, Mom. I've come to get Luke. There they were, Bob and Michelle. What brings you here? When I asked, Michelle flashed a bright smile and replied, Dear mother-in-law, thank you for caring for Luke until now. From now on, he will live with us. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. What on earth is this woman talking about? You must be joking. Luke has an interview soon. I'm very busy. Please leave. Upon hearing the word interview, Bob and Michelle's eyes lit up. So it really was Luke. We saw it on TV. Our son is truly remarkable. Their faces turned towards each other, excitement bubbling between them. And then they blurted out an outrageous idea. If Luke comes back, our shop will be secure. Beside Bob, Michelle was nodding fervently. If we get customers who come to see Luke, our sales will go up. In the long run, we could even leave the management to him. That would make life easier for us. I was astounded at the self-serving thoughts of the two. After claiming that Luke isn't their child, they show up to take him back when they realize how talented he is. A child is, Luke is, not a possession of his parents. Don't you understand? I had reached the limit of my patience. Just as I was gearing up to give them a piece of my mind, Luke appeared behind me. Seeing Luke, Bob and Michelle broke into smiles. Their smiles only stoked my irritation. However, their smiles were shattered by a single phrase from Luke. Who are you guys? Luke asked, staring at the two straight on. They looked bewildered. Who are we? We're your dad and mom. You're our beloved child who I suffered to give birth to. Michelle's words made me feel sick. How dare she call him her beloved child? Just as I was about to retort, Luke smirked and said, My only family here is my grandmother. I don't know you people who abandoned me. He stated this firmly. Luke, that woman is your grandmother, not your mother. Come back home with us. Bob tried to persuade him gently, but Luke glared at him. My home is here with my grandma. Unlike you, she's always shown me love. You abandoned me, and now you want to reclaim me because you think I'm useful? You're not my parents. It was the first time Luke had ever raised his voice like that. Bob and Michelle cringed at his outburst. Bob, visibly irritated, tried to grab Luke's arm. Just as I was about to intervene, a voice called out from behind Bob. Is what he said true? 
Did you abandon him? Journalists began to gather around, their faces solemn. They had come to interview Luke. It was already the time of our appointment with them. Reporters surrounded Bob and Michelle. They circled Bob and Michelle, firing off questions at them. Later, this interview was broadcast on television with the sensational title, The Sad Past of a Genius Boy, Confronting the Parents Who Abandoned Him. The impact was immense. The couple was lambasted on social media, and their business received numerous angry calls. How could you abandon him just because he wasn't a girl? Don't try to manipulate your child for your own convenience. On top of the angry calls, crowds of people apparently gathered to see the faces of these terrible parents. Needless to say, business could not operate normally under these conditions. In desperation, Michelle reached out to her parents for help, only to receive a cold response. You reap what you sow, deal with it yourself. We have no intention of helping anyone who had abandoned their child. Bob and Michelle were universally scorned and abandoned. The two of them were reportedly upset, crying out, Why is this happening to us? Hopefully this incident will be a wake-up call for them. Although, given their current attitude, the prospects seem bleak. After that incident, Luke and I quickly moved away. I want to cut ties with them. I can't stand going through this over and over. I respected his decision and we moved far away to prevent the two of them from ever approaching Luke again. We would have sought legal measures if we could, but it seems it's hard to sever ties with biological parents, even if they are adoptive. In Luke's new school, he made a good friend, who seemed to understand him well. Luke would bring him home, show him his homemade programming, and happily explain his points of interest. While I find Luke's interests a bit hard to follow, his friend seems to understand, listening attentively and nodding as Luke explains. From time to time, they would be engrossed in a discussion about programming. Seeing Luke so happy always made me feel glad we moved here. Thanks to his new friend, Luke has been able to live freely and happily every day. I hope they continue to get along well and support each other.